layer shifting in 3D prints, how to prevent them, and how to fix them when they happen. I've got it for you in today's video, and it's coming up next. <laughs> What's up everyone, back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dad. And in today's video, we're talking about layer shifting. Ah, we hate them, right? The print set up, it's going nice and smooth. 10, 15 hours in, you let it print overnight, you come back, see the layer shift, and all you wanna do is rip the thing off the printer and throw it against the wall. Don't do that though. This video here, I'm gonna give you some uh, preventative steps on how it can keep layer shifting to a minimum, go over some settings in Cura. Also gonna show you how to fix a layer shift recently happened to me on a Vader print that I was doing. Now I can vouch and say that all the information I'm gonna give you has worked great for me since I started doing it. I couldn't even tell you the last time I had a layer shift. Even with the best preventative measures, sometimes these still happen and that's why I'm making this video. I wanna go over some preventative measures and things that you can add to your printer or just simply do to your printer setup to help reduce layer shifting. Move over to the Marvel room and check out my setup. Now the number one most important thing with your printer is setup. And part of the setup is the platform that your printer's on. Always want something that's very firm and sturdy and not gonna wiggle or anything when the printer is in use. Another great option is adding Z support bars on your printer if it doesn't come with it. They'll help stabilize the Z, so especially when you're doing big prints and if you are printing at a little bit faster of a speed, they can help potentially reduce any shifts that may occur while printing. Another thing that you can do to try stabilize your printer is adding something like some clamps or maybe putting some small weights on here. But some people like to use these clamps here and help stabilize their printer down. Now I tried it and I didn't really see any difference, but I've heard on some of the forums and pages that people do this, they clamp their printers down and it helped them out a ton. So if you're trying to take that extra measure, go ahead and get some clamps and some weights, just kind of help stabilize your printer down. It'll help reduce movement while the printer is in use and ultimately reduce the chance for a layer shifting as well. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is a surge protector and probably one of the most important components in a proper setup for your 3D printer. And no, I don't mean one of those cheap power strips that you get from Walmart or the dollar store that are two or three bucks. I mean something that actually has a high surge protection to help protect your printer. See, even if there isn't some kind of crazy rainstorm or something going on, you can still get fluctuation in voltage throughout your house. Surge can actually travel through the printer go to these stepper motors, jump in a sense, and that can also cause the layer shift to happen. These are really key because not only can they potentially stop layer shifts, but they can stop damage to your printer. Obviously, if a big surge will come through, goes into your main control box, it can fry the whole thing. I recommend anything from 1,000 to 2,000 joules. 1,000 joules is good for something small like small LED TVs, uh, home office copiers, printers, things like that. But 2,000 joules is more adequate for things like home computers, gaming systems, home theater systems. So if you're really trying to get the best protection for your printer, I recommend stepping it up to a 2,000 joule surge protector. So now that I gave you those little tidbits on how to properly get your printer set up and protected, Let's look at some settings on Cura that'll not only help reduce layer shifting, but also improve your print quality. First thing I'm gonna talk about, no surprise, is print speed. It rarely exceeds 65 millimeters per second. You know, if I'm printing something with silk, I'll probably bump it down to 50, maybe 55. Uh, most of these, you know, wall speeds and things like that will auto change as you change your overall print speed. Uh, one thing I do like turning down a little bit lower is your travel speed, whether it be a new layer in the print or a retraction. The higher you have this, the faster it's gonna move. Um, so by keeping this low, it keeps travels at a more controlled speed and you're less likely to have any shifting or any impurities. The next group of settings are gonna be under the travel section. I highly, highly recommend clicking the avoid printed parts when traveling and avoid supports when traveling. So by clicking these two options, what it will do is when there is a travel or a path occurring, it will avoid any parts that have already been printed and it will also avoid any supports. Uh, this is key, um, especially with the actual printed part because if it snags a pre-printed part, um, it could obviously impede the movement and that's when a shift could occur. Also helps too with uh, clicking the supports because you know it can potentially help save a support from being blown out. So uh, that can be very helpful too. You don't have to worry about grabbing glue sticks and trying to fix supports on the fly. And then pretty much do the same thing with uh, the Z-Hop when retracted. What that's gonna do is lift it up off the model, move it to its next path or direction, drop it back down on the model and continue the print. So what this will do is potentially protect the model from being hit by the hot end and again, reduce the chance of a layer shift.
We think of acceleration at basically the speed in which you are driving. Um, from default, it looks like this comes at 300. Now the old versions of Cura used to be way higher. Default used to be at five or 600 and they've tuned them down. It's lower speed isn't necessarily bad. It is going to be more controlled and it can help prevent unwanted uh, movements and too fast of movements that could ultimately result in a layer shift. In conjunction with that are the jerk settings. You have your jerk turned down, smoothly moving from one step to another. Went super fast and then stopping, super fast and then stopping. So like I said, kind of slamming on the gas and then slamming on the brakes if you have this turned way up. I've always uh, changed my jerk settings lower to 8 to 10. If you have a large bed printer with some Z stabilizer bars, 10 is a great number. If you don't, uh, like my CR10 Mini, I turn mine down to 8. Depend on your printer. But ultimately, when you adjust that acceleration and that jerk control uh, down, view a more controlled path. If you're printing super fast and you've got things like jerk and acceleration tuned up super hard, you're just more likely to get layer shifts. So by tuning those down a little bit, you know, you're not only going to reduce the chance of layer shifts, but you're also going to get a much better print in the end. So now we've gone over all the preventative measures in the settings. Let's see what happens and how to fix a layer shift when it does occur. I talked a little bit on how to potentially stop and limit layer shifts. Let me show you how to fix it if one does occur. This is actually a, a relatively mild layer shift. Uh, it does get pretty bad here, and I'm going to show you two different methods uh, that you can use kind of in conjunction depending on the layer shift. So the two ways you can attack this, one with a soldering iron, just with using some old fashioned sandpaper. I like to use both depending on the area and the model. So what I'll do first is kind of show you the soldering iron method. The benefit to doing the soldering iron is we are kind of merging all of this PLA back together. Understand that it slipped and it shifted. So the adhesion between the PLA may not be the strongest. By using this method, we're melting it back together to create the strongest bond. Pretty good little shift. And this is, it's just, you know, it could, it could definitely be sanded, but there is some reshaping that we're going to have to do. Using this kind of uh, flat tip here. This is also a great one too. It's just kind of an angled uh, wedge style. Soldering iron, and it's always good to kind of get eye level. And all we want to do is kind of just comb over it and try to smooth it out. And when it's warm, you know, if you start getting overhangs, don't be afraid just to take your finger. And, and you can reshape it. It's not, you know, too hot to where you're gonna burn yourself or anything. So as it cools down, because we're kind of flattening this, so some of this is pushing off the edge here, just take your finger, just kind of rework that. So that's just a small example of how you can do that with the soldering iron now. Down here, we're definitely gonna use the soldering iron to line up even, so as this comes down, this shifts up, so we're gonna have to really kind of smooth this out. These are very minor shifts, uh, so these can be sanded all out very easy. So on these little shifts here, all we're gonna do is take some 80 grit and 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of sand these down, get these smoothed all out, and we'll move on to the next process. iron here i think it speed things up a little bit what we went ahead and did is just smoothed all this out uh, a little bit easier not having to work on that edge here uh, just sanding it does work it takes a little bit longer but i was able to smooth all this out with the soldering iron i'm going to go through and sand all this get this smoothed out and then show you the next step
So for the filler, we're using what's called Bondo Plastic Metal. Uh, this is a pre-mixed filler. You recommend filler. I don't recommend something like glazing putty. Uh, this won't fill in as deep of defects. We've got deeper defects. If you put this stuff on too thick, it'll crack, it'll separate. That's not what it's meant for. This is for fine scratches, hairline cracks, uh, pinholes, things like that. Uh, this is gonna work a lot better to help fill in uh, these deeper defects that we have here and kind of help smooth everything out. Again, it's pre-mixed, so there's no mixing required. Uh, all you have to do is break the seal, spread it on, and it dries in about 15, 20 minutes, and it's good to go. Something like a glove is gonna be a lot easier to apply to the model. So I've already cleaned the whole model down. I'm gonna put my glove on, crack this open, get spreading, and I'll take a look at it. That's it. That is the video on layer shifting, how to reduce it or prevent it to a certain degree. And obviously if and when it happens, how to fix it. I'll show you both methods there as far as repairing it goes. I like to use both methods together. I think it does speed things up a little bit. Obviously there were a few products and a few things I wanted to go over of importance. But when you follow those steps, you've seen those end results there. You won't even be able to tell that layer shift ever occurred. Obviously there are some layer shifts that aren't fixable. I've seen some pretty bad ones on some of the forums. Uh, like I said, it's a combination of certain things with the setup of your printer and some of your settings. I think if you guys go ahead and if you're not using some of these and you are having layer shifts, try out some of these things that I mentioned. Obviously those settings I went over as well, like I said, kind of slowing your print down, making it more controlled, reducing layer shifting and giving you better print quality. If you guys liked the video and found it helpful, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions on anything gone over in the video, please go ahead and drop me a comment in the comment section. All products that I used, links will be in the description. Definitely a nice little arsenal to have. Even after we go over all these settings, all these setups, layer shifts can still happen. Follow a tutorial like this, boom, your print will be looking brand new. Pretty much it for the video, guys. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. All of my subscribers, thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate all your feedback on all the videos past and present. Give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. Click that sub button if you're not subscribed. Until next time, DWO. Later.